Today is uh, Father's Day, so our message is going to be God our Father. Sometimes I bring different messages and it is it's sometimes hard for me to convey from my heart the feelings that I want you to feel and the ideas I want you to think. But years ago, when the uh, first time I heard this song, uh, how's that go? God is my, God's a good father. First time I heard that song, it was, it made me angry. That song challenged my religion. Sometimes I have to step back and I have to remember God is kind. God is gentle. God loves us more ways than we can ever imagine. Once I was able to listen to that song again and understand the idea I had of God at one time was a very strict disciplinarian. I had a vision of God as one that if I didn't measure up, He wasn't very happy with me. If I didn't live my life just exactly as it ought to be lived, that somehow or another He was disappointed or did not approve of me. If there was any way that I could convey to you that God is so much more than that, He loves you so much. He doesn't ever look at you in a disapproving manner. And you say, Danny, you, you don't understand. I, I still don't live the perfect life. I still don't follow exactly in Jesus' footsteps. That is the accuser accusing us. If you go into the New Testament and you do your study, you do your reading, you're going to find and the main people that Jesus had things to say about were the religious leaders. Do we not find it odd that Jesus wasn't walking around chewing out the sinners and beating them up? He was going around and proclaiming to them that your Father loves you more than you can imagine. And the religious leaders He's like, what is wrong with you people? Why don't you get it? Sometimes I find I have a little bit of Pharisee left in me. Every now and then I got to get it rooted out. And like I said, that, that song years ago, it, 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 it just really rubbed me the wrong way until I could finally understand that God loves me just the way I am. Standing right here, He loves me. He approves of me. I'm not perfect. I don't walk a life absolutely in Jesus' footsteps 24 hours a day. I still haven't been able to walk on water. <laughs> you know? But God approves of me and God loves me because I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and I have been adopted. I've been adopted into the family of God. He is my loving Father. I was thinking the other day, if you could take every bad thing you can possibly imagine, down from little bad things to big bad things, everything in the world bad, that is from the fall of mankind. That is, the world is a broken place. That is the work of the devil. And then you go to the other side and absolutely everything good is of God. If we could break it down to that simple, we would have a better understanding that God is good. God loves us. God wants the best for us. He is our Heavenly Father. And 
He is in so much more than we can ever understand. We're going to start out Isaiah 63, 16. And he's speaking of God. Doubtless thou art our father through Abraham. Oh, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledgeth not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. Even as far back in the Old Testament, the Bible is referring to God as our Father. 1 Corinthians 8.6 But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by Him. God is our Father. He's called our Father in the Old Testament. He's called our Father in the New Testament. Ephesians 4, 6. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Again, we're talking about Christians, we as Christians. If you're not a Christian, if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, these scriptures that I've read so far don't necessarily apply to you. You need to give your life to Christ, and I hope you join us in this family. Uh, Matthew 7.11 if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him? We're talking about our Father in heaven. Uh, this set of scripture was actually talking about people that are non-Christians, that are not saved. If their children comes up and asks for bread, you know, even some of the worst people out there will at least point them to the cupboard and tell them to take care of themselves, but there'll be something to eat. If someone evil will take care of their child, how much more will our Father in heaven take care of us? Christ, Jesus Christ, revealed the Creator to us, not as a, you know, the Creator of the world, but not, He didn't reveal him to us as somebody that's way up above us that will have nothing to do with us. He didn't reveal him as someone that was angry, uh, distant, but he revealed God as a compassionate, loving, heavenly Father. When we go to John twenty seventeen, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Many times we remember that Jesus was the Son of God. But this scripture right here, here reveals to us that we are also children of God. He says specifically right there, I ascend to your Father as well as my Father. Matthew 6, 9. Jesus again is telling us, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus is telling us that God is not only His Father that loves Him and approves of Him, but He is also our Father. Galatians 4, 5-7. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, if a son, an heir of God through Christ. Many times, as Christians or even in churches, we focus on the Lordship of Christ, and He is our Lord. But many times we don't talk about us as brothers and sisters in Christ. We are brothers and sisters. We are heirs to God's promise. 
God promises that He will take care of us. Uh, it's hard to get all the Scriptures to cover all this. Uh, again, I strongly recommend read the New Testament. You'll catch a lot of it. But uh, at one point, Jesus says, you know, if God will clothe the flowers and, and feed the birds, how much more will He take care of His children? So many times, and we just we miss all the promises that God has for us. We miss how much He loves us. We miss how much He cares for us. And we miss how much He approves of us. Right. Yeah, John 14, 9. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Some of the different scriptures I picked are trying to show you that God is not how many times we have perceived Him. If you read the New Testament, you study the life of Jesus, you will see how God feels towards His people. You will see how God acts towards others. Jesus, as I said, He taught us how to live. I hadn't seen any scripture where He condemned people that you would normally think they would be condemned. Like I said, the main complaints that He had was against the church, against the religious leaders. These religious leaders had reached a point that for whatever reason they felt like if you weren't me, you're never going to measure up. And as a Christian, we understand if it wasn't for Christ, none of us would measure up. Because of Jesus and His work in my life, I am approved, I am worthy, and I am loved. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. When Jesus was on this earth, he revealed that God wants to spend time with us. Jesus spent a lot of time with people. He spent a lot of time listening to them. We forget many times that God, as our Father, He wants to just spend time with us. We know my dad, you know, he enjoys spending time with, it, with me. We go on trips and, you know, we just talk. What do you talk about? Well, sometimes absolutely nothing important. We just talk. God wants to talk with you. You know, Dad rode with me to Colorado. He wants to spend time with me. God wants to spend time with you. Well, what are we going to talk about? You know, I've already told him, you know, I prayed for Bill, and I already told him that I need, need some extra cash, and told him my car ain't running right, and stuff like that. And, but, you know, God wants to talk to you about your dreams. You know, what, what, what are your dreams in life? Tell God about them. You woke up this morning. How'd you sleep last night? Tell God about it. Slept good? Didn't sleep good? Had a strange dream? God, you ought to hear about this. We can talk to God about any aspect of our life. How do you feel? Are you sad? Are you happy? You had a good day? You had a bad day? Tell God what's for lunch. He just wants to spend time with you. You know, how's your job? Is your job going well? Do you have a problem with your boss? How's your friends? You know, God just wants to talk to you. We make it so complicated. We make it challenging. Seems like we all want a formula. Let's see, I, when I pray to God, I need to check this off, and he check that off, and he check this off. Oh man, I missed one of them. There ain't no way he's going to hear me. That is not true. God just wants to spend time with you. 
God wants to talk with you. How does he talk with me? Well, I got a few scriptures here. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? So that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We can't know how to live if we're not listening to what God has to say. When God's talking to us about how to live, it's not to make your life miserable. It's not to take the fun out. He's helping us. It's more like an instruction manual, help you know how to live. How to take care of my finances. How to deal with friends. If you don't understand how to talk to people, read the Bible. A lot of things will be revealed. <laughs> Hebrews 1.12 God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto his, us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. God speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through his Son. He also speaks to us through his Spirit. John 16, 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit hears what God has to say. He passes that on to us. God will speak to us through his Spirit. Ephesians 3.10 To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. The church is also another way that God speaks to us. And that's why it's very important to be in a church that preaches from the Bible. Uh, be careful who you listen to. Be careful. Uh, there's many wolves in sheep's clothing. There has been since Jesus' time and it hasn't changed since then. But God wants to spend time with you. He wants to love you. And He wants you to be part of His family. 1 Timothy 2, 3, and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. God does not want anyone to go to hell. It is not God's choice, it is our choice. There is only one mediator between us and God, and that is Jesus. Uh, we can talk about a lot of different things. Uh, if you're confessing all your sins to a priest and expecting that to go to God, that is not what the Bible teaches. We confess to Jesus. We have direct access, access to God. We can come before the throne as His children any time. 2 Peter 3, 9 and 10. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as mon some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. God, our Father, loves us so much that He sent His only begotten Son, John 3, 16, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves us. The next time you're sitting there and things aren't going your way, don't blame God. Next time you're sickly, 
don't blame God. God loves you. These things are not coming from God. They're coming from, coming from the devil. If you're lonely, if you feel like you're outcast, feel like no one cares, that is not of God. When we become Christians, we accept Jesus Christ into our heart, we should be feeling the love that God is sending towards us. As I talk a little bit, Dale and I was talking this morning, be careful of feelings though. Our feelings many times will lie to us. When our feelings are lying to us, that's when we need to go back to God's Word. He will never leave us nor forsake us. If you've not given your life to Jesus, you're missing out on so much. The last scripture I just read, you know, many churches will tell you if you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're going to burn in hell. They're right. But that shouldn't be the only reason we become Christians because there is so much more. We have a Father that loves us. We have a Father that is not being critical of us. He is not condemning us. He's not walking around telling you you're not doing enough. God's standing there with His arms open. My Father in Heaven, He's saying, Oh son, oh daughter, come home. We'll close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I thank You so much that You love us. I pray for those that are not a member of Your family yet. Speak to their hearts. Let them know that You are so much more. Many times people's had fathers that, well, quite honestly, are not good at all. You are so much more. You are more than we can ever imagine. You love us more than we can imagine. You care for us more than we'll ever know. You just want so much to be a part of our life. You want to be the one that we sit around, we chat with, we talk to. You don't always necessarily want to sit around here and cry about all our problems. But sometimes we have those as well. But you want the good with the bad. Watch over us as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen.